All right, thank you. I'm talking about my poster in the back there on Clinical Query 2. This is a, a secure, lightweight, and highly scalable implementation of I2B2. So the background of this is when I went to install I2B2 at my institution, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, back in around 2007, um, for security reasons, their network was very locked down. I couldn't install Java. I couldn't create a VM, even a production database. Uh, I didn't have full access to it. So the only way I could really do this is convert all the Java layer of I2B2 into SQL Server stored procedures, put it into one big SQL script, and kind of hand it to IT to run. And this is back in 2007. I've continued to uh, maintain this ever since, and as new versions of I2B2 come out, I tweak those stored procedures and continue to maintain the, the functionality. So again, this is taking the entire Java layer of I2B2 and replacing that exact same functionality as store procedures that go into the database. Instead of that application layer, there's a tiny proxy, and what it does, it takes the incoming XML messages from a web server, passes them to a store procedure, and then the response from the store procedures I2B2 XML that gets sent back to the web client. So this, uh, you can put your same I2B2 web client on top of this and the same back in I2B2 fact and dimension tables. And it's just a simpler, easier to manage and ends up being much faster because you're not having to send data back and forth uh, uh, between the application. Then over the years, I've done some work to optimize the query engine. Since it's all inside of the database, you can uh, do some extra stuff than if you're trying to um, build this inside of um, the main I2B2 application. So one of the things I do are various roll-ups. So I take the main fact table and I create some summary statistics by concept and patient, by path in the ontology and several others. And there's a query engine that looks at the query and tries to figure out, can one of these roll-ups be used instead of the main fact table? And freshly from most queries, you can do that. It can go to the one of the roll-up tables and not have to go to the giant billion row fact table. Um, even with that though, there are certain queries, temporal queries or um, uh, sub-queries where it's gonna have to, would have to go back to that fact table. So I'm looking at, can I speed that up anymore? And we looked at something like Snowflake where you can add additional compute power. So that's a, a, a great way of improving the performance of um, an I2B2. But what if I'm stuck on the, kind of one virtual machine database server that I have at Beth Israel and I want to also get performance. So the other trade-off it can do is accuracy. So instead of getting the exact answer, can I get a very close approximate answer, but much faster? And it turns out I was researching this, there's a whole set of algorithms called probabilistic sketches or streaming algorithms. And these are used by big search engines, things like Google or Bing, where you can't possibly get an exact answer of the entire internet. It's just changing even all the time. So they take the entire internet and they summarize them in these small uh, data structures called sketches. And then you could take the user's query, run them on the sketch, and then through some mathematical transform, you get back an approximation of what the original query answer would be. So in the CQ2 web, uh, uh, when you're putting the ITB2 web client on that, it says in, when you're about to run a query, select the query method. You can run the exact query and you get the answer, or you can do one of two things, an accurate estimate or a fast estimate. And what these do will give you either a 1% error or a 10% error and give you queries in either one second or in milliseconds. So we've done this on, I do this at Beth Israel and I've also done this on National Claims Database. You can have 100 million patients with tens of billions of rows. And on these, uh, when you're leveraging the sketches, queries come back less than a second. So. We always talk about kind of real-time queries in I2B2 where you can sit there, press a button, get the answer back, but it's maybe a minute or two. It's different when real, real-time, when as soon as you're dragging and dropping things in, you're getting an immediate response. Also with millisecond queries, you can run a thousand of them in a single second. So you can do all sorts of breakdowns. You can try different variations of a query. You can build out the Venn diagram of all different combinations of terms that the user has put in and you can get uh, instant feedback to, to investigators. We do have that tiny bit of error in there, but there's a huge amount of error in EHR data anyway. So 
probably the 1% error in your query results um, doesn't make too much of a difference. And it, it makes the, the website much more responsive and, and usable. Um, when you display the results, it will display an estimate on the error. Those initial one or 10% are somewhat of a guess. Once it actually executes the query, I had a terrific mathematician from MIT helping me out with the math behind this. It calculates what the expected uh, error is in your query, and you can repeat it again if you want to to make it more accurate. So in summary, this is a very lightweight implementation of I2B2. It's just running a database script to install some sort of procedures. You're not installing the whole I2B2 application layer. It's a scalable solution that runs fast even with tens of millions of patients. Uh, we built it, uh, we put it in an open source Mozilla 2 license, same as I2B2. It's been tested with Shrine. We've had it in a FISMIT environment. We run it in AWS RDS. You don't need a kind of dedicated SQL Server instance for it. Um, it's not for all institutions. It's great if you're something like um, you're plugging your institution into Shrine and you're not going to do much else with your I2B2, just want something quick to install it, or you have a gigantic implementation of I2B2 where the real I2B2 application might be a bit slow. But if you're a normal institution, this doesn't support all the different plugins because we don't have a Java component to it. Um, and uh, I can't give you the same 24-7 type support that the real I2B2 team may be able to do better, but um, I think there are some sites and use cases where this might work very well. So if you're interested, I'm happy to chat with you by my poster.